And I hope everyone can hear me. If you can't, just raise your hand or scream. I can do better. Uh, I'm Sinan Kozak. I'm an Android Google developer expert. And I worked in Delivery Hero in Berlin as an as a infra developer. So recently, like last one year ago, I joined the infra team and started enabling other developers to accomplish uh, what they would like to do and produce better code. And during that process, we had to invest in the uh, cleaner code base. We had lots of ongoing migration, and we decided to do, hey, why not we, like, why not we should use our expertise and our learnings? So we write code all day and every day, and we get to know lots of new features, lots of new APIs. We are doing lots of migration, and I'm pretty sure that all of you has lots of great learnings and experience. For example, the API do what you want to avoid or APIs you like to call because it's more efficient, more performant. But how you can uh, transfer this knowledge to the everyone in your team or everyone in the community if, if you cannot. So there are different lint, sorry, uh, static analysis tools that we can use. And we are inherently getting lots of good tools from Java ecosystem. Thanks to their ecosystem, like we have tools like Sonar, Codacy, and every other like PMD and uh, old uh, static code analysis tool that we have. But we, with the Kotlin, we also got KTLint. It's mostly for formatting. Then we also have Detect, it, but it is purely for Kotlin. So if you'd like to do a static code analysis, including the Android resources, that also include XMLs, Manifest, Gradle, maybe Tomal file, we have Android Lint library from uh, Google. This is an old library. Like, uh, this is not, not something new. And we have these tools since the early days of Android. And why is that? What, what is the benefit of it? It helps us to scan different file types, including the non-source code files, like XML layouts and resources. It has different categories that we can write lint rules. For example, you can have a lint rule, a static code analysis for security, for correctness, compliance, performance, or even you can create your own lint rules, and, uh, sorry, in your own category in your own team. Uh, if you have a different case that you would like to prevent, it's allowed to create your own categories as well. But how many of you are uh, already using Android lint and doing Android lint checks? Great. Like good, good amount of people. I'm happy. I'm happy because I know that the fact that there are some companies that are not using it, and I saw how bad it can go wrong from my friends. Luckily, I never worked in a place that they don't have any link checks. But uh, if you are already using without any additional support, Android Gradle plugin comes with uh, default link rules, and the list goes on. List is like huge, and there are really nice rules that I would like to show you today to give some inspiration that what you can do with your own lint rules. First of all, we can prevent runtime errors and crashes. I might ask highly, how a static code analysis tool might understand what's going on runtime? A simple example is a like string formatter. If you have a string which has a dynamic value in it, so you would like to format it during the runtime, there are different, like the different amount of argument, uh, there could be different amount of argument in the string itself uh, versus what you're calling. So this lint rule specifically compares how many arguments string has and how many arguments you're passing while you're calling that string from the resources. And if they don't match, it gives you a lint rule. Or let's say you have different translations and in one of those translation, string has different number of argument. That is obvious that in the runtime, when we use that trans, uh, when we use that language, code is going to crash because there won't be any argument to replace, or there will be more arguments that our code won't be able to satisfy. So this lint rule is able to prevent our mistakes without even running the application by just checking the argument counts. And a translucent view decorator. I don't know if you ever write a, a translucent activity. The idea is you would like to show a dialogue-like uh, feature inside an activity to contain the logic better. So 
a better way to do it, not setting any background and making it translucent. And when it's translucent, it shows the previous activity in the background. And if they have a conflicting orientation request, operating system honors the previous activity and just wants to stay in the same orientation. But if you have conflicting uh, orientation, starting from Android O, it starts crashing because operating system says that I don't know what to do in this case, like because the one of the visible activity asks for landscape and the other one asks for the portrait. And this particular lint rule actually prevented us to a couple of crashes. It was disabled when I joined the company, and the reason why that it was giving errors. And people, instead of investigating it, ignored it, and then it caused us some crashes. The moment we figured that hey, we have these crashes, we checked how we can prevent it, and we already figured out that this loop exists, and when we enable it, it already showed that we have multiple problems, one, one of them coming from the library, a library that we were using, and we were able to solve those problems in no time. It can also help you to update your target and compile SDK. So there are lots of changes, behavior changes in every Android releases, and it's really difficult to keep track of what's going on, and you need to know which kind of changes you need to do in the code. For example, a recent one, if your intents has any filter in them, they need to have export tag to have better security. You need to specifically say that, hey, I would like to export this intent or not. And this is for the better security. But even if you have a library that has intent filter without export tag, this link rule will tell you uh, which intense, you need to add those exports specifically. If not, there will be runtime crashes again. And oh, there is a set AE over there. So notification trampoline. I don't know if you ever noticed it, but in the recent release of Android, it's not allowed to create an activity from background. And it was a common practice to use broadcast receivers or services for notifications. And when you use it, when you use it clicked on a notification, we usually start the broadcast list, uh, receiver or a service and then decide what, which activity to start. So now it's called as a trembling activity. Why? Because like it's not, we are not directly starting the activity, but putting a processing behind. And in the recent release of Android, it's not allowed. So your user might encounter uh, not working notifications or they might encounter a slow running, uh, a slow startup times because it's up to uh, operating system to decide how fast they're going to open the activity. Or oh, one of the favorites and one of the reasons why I started loving Lint was this one. Because one day I started using shared preference, get string, method, get string set method, and I, I'm already familiar with get string, get boolean, and I get the value, modify it, and set it, right? But the trick is, because of performance constraint of all days, they didn't do new allocation, and they just return a string set. And when we pass the string set, they just do reference conference comparison. They don't do uh, actually cool check, which means if you mutate the string set, when you try to set it again, it's not going to change anything because shared preference will think that it is exactly the same reference, so I'm not going to do anything. So I spend probably a couple of days to understand what the actual bug is, try to understand what is the reasoning. I even read the code, but I was a junior developer back in that time. I didn't consider that the equals and the uh, reference comparison is the same thing nowadays. But then what happened is, like someone suggested me, hey, open a draft PR uh, so everyone can review it. The moment I opened the PR, I got the lint results saying that, hey, you're doing something wrong here. You should create your new uh, string set before passing to me. And that was a, like a huge learning moment. So we can also teach better how to use those APIs. We can even have performance checks, right? I'm pretty sure you already know that there are certain APIs really slow on runtime, and there are certain APIs much faster. If you think about, for example, list versus sequence, if you think about array queue or linked list, they are, uh, or vector, they are slow by design. They might have uh, different big O analysis, like uh, different big O uh, usages, like uh, complexities, or they might have synchronization. So if you like to prevent those kind of API usages in your code base, 
we, you can. And one of the example is draw allocation. So during the draw process of old layouts, the system, not, not compose version, we, oh, sorry, no, our code is getting called every frame. So we need to draw something. So if we allocate paint or pet object, which are expensive thanks to Kino, so that they mentioned those kind of things. So those objects are expensive. And if we keep cr creating a new paint for every draw call, that means there will be lots of allocation and it's bad. So there's a performance check lint rule, which uh, warns you when you try to allocate new uh, objects into draw functions. And good thing is there are also really good uh, open source alternatives. These are the ones that we are currently using, and uh, they, uh, they are all they are all like a quite up to date, and their developers are accepting features and issues. And if you like to contribute them, go for it. Uh, what I like is like Slack is doing their lint rules are like fully open and they recently re-implemented Twitter Compose KT lint rules for Android lint. Why? Because Twitter KT lint rules is not going to be maintained after the recent events. So they took the ownership of those ideas and start creating the Android lint rules. So we can have better IDE integration when we are writing Compose. And the last one is my Lint rule, I like to do a shameless plug, and we had a problem with the retrofit interfaces and mutable data classes. So that I have a rule over there, like the checking the data class if it is mutable or immutable. So we prevent creating any mutable data classes in the code base. So everything needs to have while well, everything needs to have uh, unmutable list or unmutable elements, and you can do this kind of prevention in your code base as well. So how are you going to start? You have multiple options. One of them is like doing, starting the default ones, integrating the open source, or you can also create your own lint rules. But before starting your own lint rules, like, uh, you probably would like to look at how to use baseline file. And there are some edge cases, but it usually works. The golden rule is create the baseline file and don't touch it ever again. And if you keep updating your baseline file over time, that means you are not keeping up to the, like you're not following all of the uh, recent changes and you might be ignoring some of the recent changes. So there is a template repo which you can add a module into your code base. You can start writing your lint rules and prevent calling unwanted methods and constructors. Select repository has really nice example about like preventing this uh, pre uh, preventing this one. You can teach the better APIs. If you have any, you can document uh, how you would like to do the migration. Because when you prevent something, uh, when you prevent calling something, you need to give a suggestion to what to call. And the best thing I like it, it's not even about Android. So when you write the lint rule, you can use TDD. It does, you don't need to call any Android SDK API at all. So you are going to write non-Android code and you can even write tests like this to give some input that will look like a Java class or Kotlin class or any file that you would like to write test. And then you can give the issues that you would like to test and find out is there any issues or not, is it okay or not. Even better, you can ask ChatGPT to give some ideas for you because documentation of lint rule is like really not up to date. So why I'm giving this talk? So if we create more desire to use those tools, maybe they can put more emphasis on the good tools that we can use every day. And if you ask like if ChatGPT have to write it, this is like something it gives. And if you like to prevent RxJava usage, this is like you can exactly get this one and prevent anyone to call any functions directly from the io.reactivex package. And this is good because you can even write lint rules for your design system. If you like to prevent anyone to call framework design system, uh, framework elements, but you need to call, they need to call your own design system, you can do it exactly the same this, uh, like this and just change the package name. And I would like to thank you all for coming. Thank you for listening. If you have questions, I will be around. Woo!